first attack of the race goes in the first lap, under two minutes in. And today I wasn't going to get in that first attack because, you know, everyone's too fresh at the beginning of a race and it's all easy putting out the watts at the start. So I know if I was going to get away at this point in the race, it's probably not going to work. So that's from my experience. Today is a bit of a different race because I'm actually against my own teammates. I know what's going on. So today is the Reading Road Race Championships, which I won last year. So my goal in this race was to win that and obviously win the race as well. So not only am I against everyone in this peloton, I'm also sadly against Chris, Alex and Henry. And they're a bit more better sprinters than myself. So my goal is to get myself into a break when possible. Now, before I got into the race today, I noticed that there was five Swindon riders and before the race, they said to me, um, you, got, you guys have your Reading Road Race Championships today. Um, so they knew that they, we probably wasn't going to chase things down ourselves as a team. So any break they got in, I wanted to be in it. And if they wasn't in a break, my goal was to not be in that break because I trust them to, uh, to bring it back. So that was kind of my tactics. That was plan A, to get myself into a break. Plan B was to, if it comes down to a sprint, position myself well before the sprint so that I don't have to do too much work in getting around people. So, so yeah. Anyway, end of the first lap. You can see there is a Swindon rider up there. I think I said to Ben, who's the Swindon rider here, is, are you letting that go? Because it's the first lap. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I sprint up. There is three riders up there, one of them being a Swindon rider. So yeah, I go for it. Um, if you like this channel, you've watched these races before, click subscribe and uh, I'll keep you up to date with them. In the meantime, I am chasing up to these two riders here. Hopefully Ben, the other Swindon rider who is behind me, uh, is disrupting the chase. So yeah, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah, enjoy the video. We've got a decent gap. So I tried to encourage them there to keep it going, to string it out. The, uh, the guys behind us are slowly getting up to us because our speed is dipping here. And uh, there is a Condor rider just on the left there, um, who's just edged away off this little attack. And uh, yeah, everyone else behind me is kind of caught up now. But I was hoping that this Swindon guy was gonna keep chasing down the Condor guy. His name is Oliver, um, up the road. So I was thinking, right, he looks like he's powering down the, uh, the watts here. So let's sit on his wheel. Let's ho hopefully bring him back. I did think to myself, it would be great if I just bridged over to the Condor rider because he has actually won pretty much every Cat 3 race he's ever done apart from the week before uh, where he did an E1-2-3 race before the race so he was already a bit worn out but I was aware that this guy is a dangerous rider I mean he's won pretty much all of his Cat 4 races uh, all of his Cat 3 races and if he's getting up the road then that's not good so I'm doing a strong pull here um, and I elbow Adam through he will win and I say that because I want to win. <laughs> I don't want Oliver to get away today. Uh, he's won out all the other races, like I said. And uh, if he gets up the road, he will take full advantage of it. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to encourage everyone around me. So a couple of minutes later, there is a swarm of Swindon riders around me. And uh, there's also Chris, you can see just in front of me there. And uh, I was thinking, oh, they're up to something now. So let's get in the wheels. Let's see, what, uh, see what's going on here. So I get in and I couldn't see Chris because I was behind number 18 here. And then as I poke my head round, round, I can see that he's edged off the front and I'm like, oh, no way. Um, he's got away, he's getting away with a Swindon rider. So the guy on the right goes and that Swindon rider in front of me lights it up. And I'm like, oh man, he just left me. And uh, so I was a bit like, oh, I'm gonna have to pull this one back. Chris is with two riders. And uh, in a normal scenario, this would be beautiful. A teammate up the road, two people from the other team, and I'd sit back and let them go. But because this was the, uh, the, the road race champs, oh, I'm so sorry, Chris, for doing this, but I had, to, I had to put down the power to try and get back up to you. Because uh, if you guys got away there with um, like four of you in a, in a little break, potentially, that could be disaster for my race. So. I'm coming up here, I'm powering up to them. This Condor is still off, the off on the left back there. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pulling it back just about. My heart rate's at 190, they've set up, I've brought them back. 
and uh, yeah, I just didn't. I just didn't want Chris to get up the road without me, because you know, I, I want to retain my championship. So, so, so yeah. At this point, I'd done a lot of work in the la in the last two or three laps, start of the race, and uh, I needed to recover a little bit now. So as I'm trying to recover in the wheels here, you can still see Oliver, the Condor rider, up the road. He's in striking distance for someone to bridge over. And I was really surprised that he hadn't got swallowed up by the last couple of attacks. But he's still there. I wasn't too concerned because he's only just hanging off the front. Someone's going off there. And I was pretty confident that he might get brought back pretty soon. Only a couple more attacks and we'd probably have him. So as we come around this bottom corner, there's a few people that have gone off the front. Not any Swindon riders that I could see, but I was behind two, so I was kind of covering whatever they were doing. Because um, if they pull, it, pull things back, I can be right there just in case a brake gets in. So this rider picks up the pace. I sit on his wheel to be carried up, but I'm in his wheel and I'm doing like 500, 600 watts here. Just sat on his wheel, so he was really going for it. And uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was hurting at this point. My heart rate is so high. And after that bit of work, there is another Swindon rider who I didn't realise was up the road and he starts disrupting and blocking everyone. And uh, I lose the guy who had the momentum's wheel. So I am getting chipped away at here quite badly. So another effort um, to dig in. And you can see ahead, that's the women's race, but it was all strung out in front of us. A few splits were appearing. And uh, at least if there was going to be a split, I was going to be on the right side of it at this moment in time. So yeah. A couple of minutes later we're coming down to this bottom corner and out of nowhere Alex and some other guy seem to kick up and do an attack themselves and uh, it always seems to be happening on this bottom corner so I'm coming down here and it's not a Swindon rider that Alex is with so I wasn't too fussed so I knew that the Swindon guys would probably chase that back so I try not to do too much work I do a bit of power at the corner and uh, I'm just kind of waiting for someone from Swindon to take up the chase on that. So on the left, one of them goes, um, which was nice because I'm feeling like I'm getting a, getting a good race brain of, of what's going to happen and when. And uh, so I get in their wheels and uh, get the free ride up to Alex. And as I'm getting that ride, it slows down a bit. Then two other Swindon riders on the right go for it. And I'm like, oh man. Well, if Alex gets away with two Swindon riders, similar to the scenario of Chris earlier, then my race is over if they get away. So I, again, my over-eagerness jumps on and uh, I try to get back in the wheels to bring back Alex as well. So that I'm at least in this group that could potentially get away. So we're coming around the top and uh, yeah, we pull them back. Thank God, Chris is behind me. Um, if he attacked now, I'd just roll my eyes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we come up here, they're pulled back, and uh, even though I didn't do any pulls in, that, in, in that, that chase back, I still had to sprint up to get back up to them. And uh, yeah, look at my heart rate here. Like I said, I try to avoid looking at my heart rate in races and, and watching this back. Oh my gosh. Chilling at 190 for the first 15 minutes of this race, there's not a good place to uh, to be racing at because it's just going to affect me deeper in the race later. The uh, the guy from Condor, Oliver, is still up there, further up the road. How he's not been brought back yet, I don't know, but he's still in striking distance. And yeah, at this point, I was thinking to myself, well, there's nothing to be concerned about at the moment. He's still not too far ahead. And uh, he's got another 40 minutes or so to stay away from us. And he's not that far. And four, look at them socks on the left. Straight out of his wife's and Summer's draw. They are going to give Miles from Swindon Race Team a run for his money with the competition for the best socks in these races. Don't know if you saw it the other week, but here they are. These are turning into fashion contests and not bike races. So a few minutes later, I've had a lap of not doing anything and there is three riders up the road. And I wasn't sure if there was a Swindon rider up there on this one. Um, admittedly, I don't think I was paying that much attention because uh, I've been suffering for so long. So as soon as I see that Swindon rider kick up there, I hop over to him and uh, get on that wheel as quickly as I can. Because if he gets away, you know, the Swindon riders are going to be disrupting behind us. And also, if there's a Swindon rider up there and he's bridging over to them, then, uh, then that's great news. So I'm still on his wheel. He eventually 
elbows me through and I stick it in rather than doing a small smooth pull past him simply because I've noticed that he's done quite a bit of work he's been in front of me a few times pulling me along and I thought oh maybe if I just stick in the knife a bit try and make him make him suffer and uh, yeah hopefully we can leave him behind a little bit so I come up here man look at my heart rate this is <laughs> this is not good uh, I'm looking at watching this back and I'm having a heart attack my heart rate is raised up just watching this so uh, yeah we come back up to here come around this corner we've pretty much pulled back them two guys in front of us and as we come around the top they're looking around they're not in a line so I kind of ease off as well and as I've eased off another attack goes and I'm thinking to myself right I really need to sit that one out um, so I get behind Alex I, I sit there my heart heart rate's still high and uh, but I'm thinking to myself right I've just got to trust that everyone else brings this one back I don't have the energy to keep chasing these back and uh, I just sit in the wheels recover oh try to recover even though I'm doing above 300 watts there but um yeah I just put my trust into everyone else looks like I'm finally doing nothing so trying to bring my heart rate down now we're coming into the bottom corner there's still them three riders up the road and Chris has gone around with some bad intentions and uh, I'm thinking oh maybe he's up for pulling this back I didn't really um understand the logic because there was two Swindon guys seem to be pulling along but um I think he kind of realized because he kind of sits up and uh, swerves across to the side I think he grabs a bottle at some point as well <laughs> and uh, and yeah leaves it back to Swindon to chase down which was a shame really because I could do with Chris wearing himself out a bit like what I've been doing half a minute later another little attack goes on the right and uh, I just try and stay on the wheel stay near the front of the race then that way I can't be behind any of the bad splits so see the guy there on the right Ben disrupting again and uh, I know better now, I know who to watch, who's the disruptor and who isn't. So um, yeah, I go past him and I get on this spending guy's wheel. And sure enough, we pull them back. And for one of the very few times in this race, my heart rate is under 180, which is fantastic. Yay, 175, that is comfort zone for me. That is recovery, basically. Also, Oliver, just on the left up there, is still away from us. We're almost halfway through this race and he's about 20 seconds up the road at this point. So still not too far um, and still got half the race left to play for. Um, but yeah, I was, I was getting concerned. Um, I did say at the beginning of this race to Adam, if you let him go, he will win. And at this rate, we still haven't pulled him back. Is that like that? And at this point, I was chatting to Adam, who's a part of Reading Cycling Club, but races for Buckley Performance Coaching. He, uh, we, we, were, we were chatting just to check whether he was still up there and just confirming. And as an Adam comes around here, I'm thinking, oh, maybe Adam's gonna go for it. And we could do the dream and do a two up TT up to him. Uh, but no, that doesn't happen. I just sit on Adam's wheel and we do nothing. So we are a lap later and he is one of them two riders up there. And I've had a good bit of recovery and I'm thinking, right, Oliver, the Condor is still isn't, isn't far away. So I was still confident that he was going to get swallowed up here. Um, so I just remain in these wheels trying to do as minimal work as I can. So I am still recovering quite well. A few minutes later, my heart rate's under 170 at this point. Um, so yeah, and I kind of decided in my head that I was just going to chill out for the rest of the race. Go to plan B, which would be the sprint at the end. Um, because if I was feeling quite fresh and recovered, I'm sure everyone else was going to be feeling quite fresh and recovered. So if I went for it now, um, I'm sure everyone else would be up for going again now. So, yeah, so I left it out and I just sit in whilst I ponder and decide whether I should just leave it to plan B, which was the sprint finish. So about another two or three minutes later after that, or not two or three minutes later, about two or three laps later, Look at my heart rate, I am still recovering well, I'm at 165. I've done nothing for the last 15 minutes. And look how much more efficient I am. Um, my heart rate is down low and it's been like this for a while. And in my head, I have decided that I'm just gonna roll the dice, try and beat Alex and Chris at their own game, which is the sprint. Um, so that's in my head now and I'm just looking to sit in to the end. Um, 
I probably know my best chance is to try and get in a breakaway, but I've been recovering so well that maybe if I can be fresh towards the end, get myself in a good, good position for the finish, then there is a chance I could get there. But as I'm sat here, I get a quick reminder that it's not the best place to be. <laughs> that cone getting hit, it's a lot sketchier when you're in the mid pack or towards the end of the, uh, the peloton. So in my head, I'm thinking, Meh, maybe I'm better off being a bit further up at this point. Plus, look how strung out it is. If a split happens now, I'd have a lot of work to end up doing. So yeah, not great. And sure enough, a couple of minutes later, look what appears, a little split. <laughs> and uh, yeah, someone on the front of this little group needs to uh, bring that back, which they do. But um, yeah, a quick reminder that being on the wrong end of the peloton isn't great. It's always best to be you know, in the first half, the first quarter even. And the other problem of being back in the peloton is Adam has gone up the road and he's attacked off. Just saw him on the left and uh, you end up missing opportunities like that off the front. So if I want to be in a break, being all the way back here, um, even though I planned for a sprint at this point, um, when I saw that go and I was like, oh, three of us could have got away there, um, potentially, and that's where I need to be. So being towards the front of the, uh, the peloton, you always have the option of, if you do want to hop on an attack, uh, you can hop on it. And if you don't want to hop on it, you don't have to, but it's a lot better than being back where I am at the moment. Um, but they get brought back. A Couple of minutes later, my heart rate's still nice and low, 170. And I'm thinking maybe we've got 10, min 10 minutes left, maybe three laps to go after this lap. I'm so used to Abingdon being about an hour long. Yeah. But I know where the bell goes. And uh, I'm like, what? I think you heard me there. I was so confused. So the panic sets in. I've got one lap to get into a sprint position. So I come up the side of everyone in a panic because I think I'm so far back. But in doing so, you can see behind me, I'm dragging Chris up. And um, I didn't know I was dragging him up. But in my head, I was thinking, bloody hell. I thought we had three laps left. I'm so used to Abingdon being an hour from previous races that I've done here over the years. Um, and I'm like, oh gosh. But the guy in front of me up there, I think, oh, is that the Condor rider? It looks like we've brought him back. So that's good. Um, so my goal now is purely to stick in this top bunch of riders. So I came quite far back in the peloton at that point when I heard that bell. And uh, my goal now is to stay up here. My heart rate from trying to get up to the front of the peloton is at 190. So I've kind of killed myself here, trying to stay near the front for the last lap. But I'm behind these guys' wheels. I don't want to use up too much, too much energy. But in my head, I want to be first or second wheel around that last corner. Um, so I don't want to get swarmed. You can see, um, looks like I'm out in the wind, but I was kind of getting covered by the, um, by the by a bit of crosswind there. And uh, I came around this guy, guys on the right, I can, I was paying attention, they were going for it. So I'm like, damn it, I need to get on that side. I get over onto the wheels over here, my heart rate's at 193. Oh my God, I am digging myself a hole here. So lucky that I was rested up for the last 20 minutes, but um, I'm, I'm making it hard for myself. But hey, I've got to stay near the front, and uh, and yeah, I need to uh, I need to be in a good position for that last corner because when I sprint, I don't tend to move up many places. Um, I tend to hold my position. So if I'm six before the sprint, I normally finish six in the sprint. I find um, so I come down here with that in mind that if I want to be win this race, I need to be in that top. Well first second or third wheel quite a few riders around there came on to me so i hop onto this guy's wheel sit on him you can see chris behind me sat on me so i'm leading him out at the moment which is really bad um this guy comes through and i'm losing back i'm coming back positions here so i go around them again i'm at 194 um alexander is now on my wheel this is the perfect lead out for everyone um but thankfully that london dynamo rider seems to come round and uh, they get boxed in a bit. So now I'm coming around this corner and I'm about to try and go for the win here. So I pick it up, heart rate's 196. My sprint, <laughs> I think it peaks at like 800 something because I just burnt all my matches earlier in the race and out of nowhere, 
shadows come up on me and Alexander comes flying past, fair play. Um, and then I get pipped to the line by everyone else, which is super frustrating. So where did I finish? I finished 15th. Can you believe that? <laughs> but yeah, I shot myself in the foot in that last lap, did too much work, didn't have the power because of that to kick up in the sprint and get above a thousand odd watts and a uh, very hard race at the first 25 minutes. Oliver, who, uh, who was the Condor rider, he managed to actually get away. We never caught him, he got away solo. And if you wanna watch last year's Road Race Champs, click the video below. See you soon.